ready to roll pretty soon. Anytime you want to gavel at the work. All right, it's 6 o'clock. Let's get going. Okay. I will now call this meeting to order. Good evening and welcome to the August 25th City of Hollister Planning Commission meeting. May I have verification of agenda posting, please? Uh, good evening, Chairperson uh, Hugh Boy. Uh, our agenda was posted on Friday, August 19th at 4.43 p.m. Thank you, Brian. Commissioner Alvarez, will you lead us into the Pledge of Allegiance, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Chris. Can I have roll call, please? Here. Here. Okay. He'll be. Uh, the, he's the new. The new guy, right? Uh, yeah. Mr. Moore. Yes, Mr. Okay. Moore, but he did redact from the position. Oh, he did. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I will ask for <laughs> approval of minutes dated June 22nd, 2016. <coughs> I'll make a motion. I'll second it. I have a motion and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Minutes are approved. Okay. Communications from public on items not listed on the agenda. Any speaker cards? Uh, Commissioner, uh, Chairperson Huboy, I have one speaker card. Mr. Matt Kelly. And that is agenda item number one okay but uh, there are no speakers for any items not on the agenda anyone in the audience cared to address Commission on any items not on the agenda okay with no speakers we'll go into public hearings item number one minor subdivision number 2016-2 Sandra Cross requesting to subdivide an existing 0.75 acre parcel into three lots in a manner manner that retains the existing single-family home and accessory buildings on one parcel and have the potential for a single-family home on the second and third parcels. The site is located in the R1-LPZ Low Density Residential Performance Overlay Zoning District at 1640 Cienega Road, being more specifically described as APN 020-170-034 CEQA is categorically exempt. Uh, staff report, please. Yes. The applicant is requesting approval of a minor subdivision 2016-2 to subdivide an existing 0.75-acre parcel into, th into three lots in a manner that retains the existing single-family home and accessory buildings on the parcel, and the other two lots would be for a single-family homes in the R1 LPZ single-family residential district. Parcel 1 would be 14,000 31 square feet in size. Parcel 2 would be 8,723, and parcel 3 would be 10,047 square feet. The applicant proposes to construct a single family home on parcel 2 and 3. There is an existing 78 inch in diameter pepper tree that would remain on parcel number 2. Vehicle access to the parcel would be from, what, from an existing aggregate based driveway along Cienega Road as shown on the, on the map. Vehicle access to parcel two and three would be from, from a 24-foot wide aggregate driveway proposed at the, north, at the north end of the parcel. The driveway would be approximately 280 feet in length. Condition number 47 of the draft resolution requires that the first 50 feet of the driveway, of the, sorry, of the 24-foot way shared driveway beginning at Cienega Road shall be paved with asphalt concrete. The driveway reduces to approximately 12 feet wide at parcel two and three, as shown above. The Hollister Fire Chief and Engineering Departments have reviewed and approved the driveway layout. A 24 inch in diameter unknown species tree and multiple grapevines are placed along the north end of the property that would be removed to make way for the proposed 24 foot driveway. Thank you, Maria. Utilities would be obtained from Abundance and Drive and from Cienega Road. 
There is an existing 8-inch sanitary sewer main along Bundanson Drive to the north of the subject property. A 15-foot wide sewer easement from Bundanson Drive runs along the east end of the existing adjacent vacant lot. As you can see in the screen, um, there is the plan. The plan shows where the easement's at, and then the property adjacent to the north is vacant. So the um, easement runs along the east property line of the law on 231 Bundanson Drive. <clears throat> All domestic water connections are located on Cienega Road. Water to the site would be obtained from an existing water main along Cienega Road. Roof downspouts will be directed to underground roof water dispersion outlets located in all three parcels. For large storm events, the site will have a concrete dike around the perimeter of the property such that flood waters will release over the proposed driveway and into Cienega Road. The City of Holster General Plan Land Use Element Policy 8.3 is listed to ensure that new development in neighborhoods supports rather than detracts from the existing residential character of the area. And um, single-family residences are located along the north and east of the project site and are proposed to the south of the site as well. The subdivision is for future single-family residential homes, which is consistent with the residential character in the area. A little, a little bit of background. Um, yeah. Sorry, Maria, I no, skipped okay. that part. At its regular meeting of June 2nd of 2014, the City Council of the City of Hollister adopted an ordinance 1099 pre-zoning the subject property into the R1LPZ Low Density Residential Performance Overlay Zone District. Also, at its regular meeting of March 26, 2015, the Local Agency Formation Commission, also known as LAFCO, approved the annexation of the subject property into the corporate city limits of the City of Hollister. And with that, staff recommends that the Planning Commission review the applicant's request, receive all written and oral testimony regarding the proposal, and consider approving minor subdivision number 2016-2 subject to the findings and conditions contained in the draft resolution. Are there any questions for staff? Any questions? Uh, just before we go into the public hearing, I did receive a letter from James Matthews. Did you also see, receive that? Okay. So... Uh, with no questions for on the staff report, let's go in the public hearing. I'll open the public hearing now at seven minutes after six. Do we have any speaker cards on this item? Yes. Uh, Chair, Chairperson Huboy, we have one speaker, Matt Kelly, uh, for item number one. Good evening. Chairperson Huboy, fellow commissioners and staff, uh, on behalf of my client Sandy Cross, and I would like to thank Abraham and Maria for their hard work on this project. We really appreciate your support. Uh, appreciate your approval of this. If there are any questions, I'm here to answer them. Any any questions for Matt? I uh, just uh, <clears throat> on on the layout, just to and kind of if. For Mr. Matthews, uh, for his on his behalf. Sure. The it, it seems to me that the confines of the site would would make it. It's pretty uh, 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 straightforward in terms of the drive location. Uh, he was suggesting a, a cul-de-sac. I don't think that. I mean, that's normally for a cluster type development. I don't see a, a how a cul-de-sac would be. I have trouble uh, envisioning a cul-de-sac on this. Uh, would, you, would you agree with that? I agree with you that, that there isn't room or, or the necessity for a cul-de-sac. Okay. Um, as Abraham pointed out, uh, Chief Alvarez from the fire department reviewed the site plan and the property and, and found adequate turnaround for, uh, for, for his fire truck and emergency vehicles. Okay. Thank you, Matt. Thank you. Me. One else in the audience cared to address the commission on item number one. No further speakers. We'll close the public hearing now at nine minutes after six. Discussion? Uh, no discussion. I think it's pretty straightforward. Yeah. Pretty straight. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, so, um, I'm going to entertain a motion. I, I will make a motion to approve uh, minor subdivision 
number 2016-2 PC resolution 2016-24. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Item number one has been approved. Congratulations. Okay, now we go into item number two, conditional use permit number 2016-8. Sandra, excuse me, Seda Yasmin Acosta. Requesting a conditional use permit for the conversion of a two car garage into a one car garage and a one chair hair salon in the R1 low density residential zoning district. The property is located at 640 C Street being more specifically described as assessor's parcel number 055-231-010. CEQA is categorically exempt. Maria? Yes. Uh, the applicant is requesting um, an approval for a conditional use permit for the conversion of 172.3 square feet of an approximate 527 square feet garage space for a one chair salon with a half bath or powder room in the R1 low density residential zoning district. She's proposing the beauty salon to be used by the owner only and with the purpose of working from home. Typical hair supplies like scissors, trimmers, blow dryers, and closely related beauty salon equipment supplies will occupy the space. The hours of operation she's proposing is Monday through Saturday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. by appointment only. The beauty salon does not anticipate any additional track deliveries or loadings a day other than that of a single family dwelling with. As far as uh, parking, the garage conversion would allow for an enclosed parking space instead of two and the driveway would continue to allow for up to three vehicle parking spaces for a total of four off street parking spaces. Thanks Maria. Per section 17.22.130, Titled Home Occupations of the Hollister Municipal Code, a conditional use permit shall be required for a one chair barber shop or beauty salon because it does not meet the criteria of the operating standards outlined in subsection C and D of, of the same section for an over the counter permit, but may be allowable subject to the approval of a conditional use permit by the Planning Commission. The subject site is located in the low density residential district and is designated in the general plan as residential. Staff would like to commend the applicant for taking the initiative of uh, preparing the application and going through the process as, as required. With this, staff recommends that the Planning Commission review the applicant's request, receive all written and oral testimony regarding the proposal, and consider the approving of conditional use permit application number 2016-8, subject to the findings and conditions contained in the draft resolution. Are there any questions for staff? Just a comment that we don't have a covered parking requirement here in the city. Chairman Hoover, you're correct. So the for single family, yes. Is is I, I noticed the floor plan doesn't isn't dimension, but I guess that there'll be enough uh, space for one car to park there. That's correct. On the floor on the floor plan um, where it says proposed up on the screen, um, that's where it it anticipates one car parking on the garage and then approximately hundred and seventy two square feet for the one chair beauty salon it would be by appointment only and one one client at a time to minimize the, the potential for any traffic on the in the area okay so abraham in this type of situation there was there would be no accessibility issues tied to this conditional use permit right or conditions of uh, that's a good that's a good point um commissioner torres we have um spoken with as part of our drc we um did meet with Greg Johnson, the building official, and he did indicate that uh, pending approval of the conditional use permit, then he would take the proper uh, measures for a proper garage conversion for the beauty salon and provide any type of um, requirements um, that, need, that need to be met, including ADA requirements. As proposed, it doesn't show ADA accessibility, like for example, in the bathroom, but if that's, that's a requirement, um, then at that point, um, prior to obtaining building permits, um, the building official would require that modification. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank I think you. There, there would be, uh, in my view, there would be some accessibility measures that would pertain to this project, but we're not going to, I mean, that's we're going to defer that to when it goes through the 
building permit processing. That's correct, right. Chairman Hillboy. We will notify um, building official Greg Johnson about that. Okay. Might have to make the bathroom a little bit larger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other comments? Yeah, all the neighbors have been notified. Everybody? That's correct, Commissioner Alvarez. We have sent out a 300-foot mail out. Um, and it has been published in the uh, n newspaper as well, okay. at least 10 days in advance of this meeting. All right. As long as everyone. Thank you. Any other comments or questions on the staff report? Okay, I'll open up the public hearing now at six, uh, 616. Do you have any speaker cards? Uh, we have one, uh, Miss Nancy Romero. Okay. Good evening, all of you. Uh, I'm new to Hollister as, as of about five years ago and uh, moved into C Street, which is a very quiet, elderly, uh, nice area. Uh, I've talked to every one of my neighbors. One of them is moving away in eight months, so he doesn't care. One of them is an elderly person that's semi-handicapped, which he's not too happy about it, but he couldn't come in. The neighbor that was going to come with me tonight had his dog shot in his backyard this afternoon, so he's too upset to come in, and he's oh. dealing with that. And so he's asking me to at least have one more person pretending to be by my side, uh, uh, disagreeing with the, with the permit. And the reason we're really disappro disapproving of it is there's no room for handicap access accessibility there. Uh, the water uh, and the sewage is going to be used more. There will be more traffic, and I guarantee you it's not going to end up with a one-chair salon. It may start out that way, and it will work out to probably be two, if, if not just that. Um, and if she starts doing nails, she's going to have, you know how women are with their nails. The traffic will be coming and going constantly. It's not going to be just one appointment at a time. There's going to be people waiting like it is everywhere else in town when you get your nails done. Um, another thing is the parking. It is a double car garage. You will have parking for one, but that street is always filled with school kids parking there to walk to school or people with their, their own vehicles on the street because there's not many people that have one car. They all have two and three. So the parking will be a problem. Um, <coughs> as far as deliveries, she will have to have deliveries made to her house because she has supplies to pick up. Uh, when you have a beauty shop or a nail salon, there's all kinds of chemicals that you use, especially the acetone that stinks. And if you've ever been near a beauty shop, you know what it smells like, and I don't like that smell. Um, I have exotic birds that I have that are very, very expensive, anywhere from twelve dollars to $13,000 a bird. I have three of them that live across the street, and if she has a nail salon, I will smell it. My birds can die from it, Does, and I'm very, very picky about my animals. Uh, another one is um, um, there's no reason why she can't find a small place uptown to work like every other business owner does. There's a lot of small buildings. She can pay the same insurance, the same license, the same taxes like everybody else in town instead of getting uh, subsidized and in, in lower insurance rates on a business through your homeowners because you can run a small business under your homeowner's policy at one-tenth of a price if you, if, if you went uptown. I have been in business for 29 years before I retired after my husband's death, and I know the policies as far as getting a small business in your home compared to, and, and paying for insurance compared to going uptown and spending seven thousand dollars for insurance compared to maybe four or five hundred dollars a year and it makes a big difference so if she wants to run a business legitly and 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 keep the the, the, to the town and the, and the neighborhood clean and quiet like it is now let her find a small place uptown a lot of small uh, you know small buildings and for my neighbor and myself we definitely disapprove Okay, thank you. Is the applicant here t this evening? The applicant is here this, this evening. I'm not sure. Um, we can respond. I'm not sure if, they're, if they want to comment or, or not. See, would, would the applicant care to address commission and respond to some of these concerns? Yes. Can you uh, uh, come to the podium, sir? State your name. My name is Luis Garcia, the homeowner. 
first my wife here, Saida. Um, one comment she did made uh, about exotic birds and all the chemicals that she might use. First of all, she doesn't do nails. We also have exotic birds as well. And that's one of our biggest concern, like chemical wise and all that stuff. I mean, she doesn't do nails, first of all, like I said, and I think that's, uh, how could I say, uh, I don't believe that will be an issue. If a parking wise is gonna be an issue, that is also of limits because our neighbor, our neighbor, we have had some issues with him parking wise because it is they always have different type of vehicles coming in and out because he does landscaping and I'm pretty sure she's aware of it. And we <coughs> had some issues with him in the past, parking wise. What uh Forgive me if you've mentioned this. What are the hours of operation for your business? That'll be something that we need to work out with. I mean, she will have to, you know, schedule up and, and all that. I'm not really, I mean, I, I work from 5 in the morning to sundown, so that'll be her schedule. Uh, be honest with you, we haven't sat down and really talked about um, schedule-wise on her business yet. Have you talked to your neighbors? Okay. Um, not about specifically about this, no. But that was uh, the reason why we believe uh, the letters were sent out and, you know, but I mean, if that'll change things, yes, I'm willing to go out and talk to them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it would be a good idea to show <coughs> good faith and talk to your neighbors oh, yeah. and see if you can work out some of their concerns. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. That would be nice. We can do that. Your first name again, sir? Luis, L-U-I-S. Thank Garcia. you. Any, uh, Questions for um, please? No, I know this. You know, there's several um, beauty shops, you know, in the area. Um, I, I've never heard any, you know, complaints. I, I've even gone by a couple that I know, you know, and I, I, I you know, haven't witnessed any, you know, um, too many cars or things like that. And you know, as long as she keeps it to appointments and doesn't, uh, you know, go over. And I appreciate that you went through the process, yeah. you know, uh, did it right and didn't just open up and say. Oh, no. hey, you know, yeah, you know, that, that, yeah, shows, that shows that, right. you know, it shows to me at least that, you know, you're concerned mm -hmm. about doing this thing right. Correct. So, and, and I, you know, I, I, I believe, you know, that, that um, you know, you're going to continue to do things correctly, well. you know, and, and hopefully you'll build up your business large enough where you have to move uptown or something like that. Yeah. And, you know, that would, I hope, hopefully that would be your, you know, um, goal. So, yeah. um, you know, I know you, you know, having a business in the house is very, it, you know, it, it, it's it's very good. I, I believe, you know, you start out in your home and then you move to a larger place. So, um, you know, I, I I believe that you will, you know, take take good care of your shop and your neighbors. So well. I hope you prove me right. Yes, we will. Not only comments, I, no, I agree. Uh, I love the entrepreneurial spirit. And I think uh, starting small like this, and eventually hopefully you'll grow the business and move into something larger. Uh, because it is, uh, it can be very daunting financially and emotionally when you are, do have a business downtown. Uh, I know that from experience from family, but uh, um, no, I, I, I have no issues with this item. Thank, Thank you, you Luis. Appreciate it. Thank you. Anyone else in the audience care to address the commission on item, no, item number two? Further speakers? No. Okay, no, I'll close the public hearing now at 25 after 6. So I just want to reiterate that the, the reason for the one chair requirement is precisely for that, for it to be a low scale um, and by appointment only. That's part of the home occupation requirements. And that is, you know, if, if you know, if she does get busy and there is more clientele, which is which would be great, at that point we, the city of Hollister, can help her try to uh, find a space in the downtown area or in a commercial area to to be located. Uh, but at this time, in talking with the applicant and talking with with the um, with the with Louise, the person who also did the plans for her, which which are great. I mean, they they went they went above and beyond the the permitting uh, requirements. 
um, showing all of the dimensions of the house and the garage and talking with them. They just want to have something very low key at this point. Um, the hours of operation are, are allowed for home occupation are 8 to 8, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m., but they're, they're um, in talking with them, they're thinking of doing them like 8, 8 to 5 or so, one, one person at a time to try to avoid creating any parking spaces, um, any, any parking traffic issue. Parking, they'll still have one in the garage, one par available parking. They'll, they'll have three in the driveway, so it'll be a total of four parking spaces. Hopefully, they'll only need one, one parking space um, per client at, at any given time. So hopefully that would be fine. Um, and so, yeah, if at any point she does get very busy, we'll be more than happy to accommodate trying to find a, a place for her um, elsewhere. Thank you, Ibrahim. Yeah. Okay, so any other? Okay, I, I'll, I'll let you speak. You know, I did close public hearing, I believe, but. Thank you, Go Mr. Ahead. Chair. Um, Sorry, I'm Luis, the designer from LM Designs. Um, running a little bit late. Um, from what I hear, there's a little bit of concern that we have, you know, maybe with some of the neighbors and stuff. But I just wanted to clarify, and I'm not sure that this um, plan shows it very clearly, but we are moving the fence over a little bit back, and we will still have a side fence. And by placing the entrance to the salon on the side, it is gonna be kept very intimate. Um, you won't be able to notice it from the street. Um, one client at a time, one car, there won't be heavy traffics. Um, we did speak with the client and we do wanna make sure that it's, the neighborhood is not impacted by this. Okay. I, I think the space is, is small with one chair and you probably might undoubtedly lose some of that space due to the accessibility, but uh, yeah, I appreciate you you coming in and letting us know that you're concerned about the neighbor neighborhood and uh, your comments about the fence. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, now public hearing is closed at six twenty-seven. So, do we have any other further comments on this item number two? Um, Mrs. Romero. I, you know, I want you to know that we, you know, appreciate you coming down here. You know, um, I will hold the staff here. You know, if there's any problems, please come back. You know, and or, you know, you can get your city council person. You know, and we will work with the, uh, you know, the new business owners to you know, hash out any problems. Like I said, you know, you like you told us you were in business, so you know you know that starting a business is hard, and and I you know I like to see the you know new businesses start up. I, I hate to decline anybody, so you know, I hopefully they will you know hold themselves to you know making this business successful and working with the neighbors, so there isn't any um, you know issues that come about. All right. I have one question. Yes, ma'am. What kind of exotic birds do they have? Oh, I, <laughs> oh. I think yeah, that's relevant. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. The public hearing is, okay. is, is officially closed. I, and I share that. Thank you for coming. And, um, and I, I think that the neighbors have shown good faith that they want to communicate with you and, and hopefully make things good for the neighborhood. Okay? All right. So I entertain a motion on item number two. I would make that motion to approve conditional use permit number 2016-8. PC Resolution 2016-25. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Item number two has been approved. Congratulations. We go on to item number three. Conditional use permit application number 2016-7, American Casting, requesting the installation of a 2,160 square foot pre-manufactured building for additional workspace for an existing investment casting manufacturing company. The pre-manufactured building is anticipated as temporary up to two years until a new building is constructed. The site is located in the M1 Light Industrial Zoning District at 51 Fallon Road, being more specifically described as APN 051-120-062. CEQA is categorically exempt. Thank you, Mr. Chair. The applicant is requesting, as you mentioned, approval of a conditional use permit to install a temporary 2,160 square feet, approximately 36 feet by 60 foot, 
pre-manufactured building on a 1.9 acre parcel to be used as additional workspace at an existing investment casting manufacturing company here in Hollister. The site is located in the M1 Light Industrial Zoning District at 51 Fallon Road. The proposed temporary building would be just shy of 14 feet in height uh, with 13 feet 11 inches with a whisper gray color body, matching hood, and stock dealer logos throughout the entire building. Elevation A would face west towards the existing parking and existing office manufacturing building on site. That's the elevation at the very top of the screen. <clears throat> Elevation A would have two entry doors and four windows. An ADA ramp would be placed along the west elevation of the temporary building for ADA accessibility. Elevation B would face west and it includes horizontal boarding on the exterior and four windows. Heating, ventilation, and air conditioning units would be on elevation C, south of the building, and um, as shown in the plans, and the rest would have horizontal and vertical single glazed bronze glass windows with bronze frame. And elevation D would face north and it includes horizontal boarding on the exterior and one window. The total usable workspace would be 1,767 square feet. There are 30 parking spaces currently provided with one ADA stall and a bicycle rack that holds up to five bikes. The landscaping along the north side of the existing manufacturing building is to remain and the site currently has concrete pads that are used for the dumpsters on site. It, had, it has also been agreed that a new trash enclosure will be built as part, of the as part of the future permanent building. The adjacent property to the east was purchased by the applicant as well, and it is anticipated to be part of the future building. American Casting Company work, there's just a little background of Abraham, sorry, yeah. American Casting Company work with a variety of super alloys and other high performance materials. Their unique lean manufacturing systems are property cer certified, allowing them to serve medical, aerospace, and other critical industry applications. They currently employ over 30 people and utilize the latest in 3D printing technologies and vacuum melting for rapid development of products and super alloys and other high performance materials. For example, items such as knee replacement parts are individually manufactured from 3D scans of existing bone structure specific to each patient. Please see Exhibit A, just up in the screen, for an example of the type of products manufactured by American Casting. American Casting also provides a unique product and it has experience in steady growth and orders. They propose a building showing in this application as a leased manufactured office for use by expanded cells force in the near future, which is a goal of a permanent 25,000 square feet feed manufacturer and sales business beginning construction within two years. Thanks, Maria. Now, per section 1710040, Industrial Zoning District Performance Standards of the Hollister Municipal Code, modular buildings, as what the applicant is proposing, are prohibited in, in the city um, unless approved as a temporary building for construction or as in this case, with a conditional use permit for a temporary use not to exceed six months. After the applicant was notified that the temporary structure would only be allowed for a period of six months based on the industrial zoning district performance standards, um, the applicant requested to meet with staff to possibly extend the use of the temporary building to two years. Development services staff met with the applicant on July 26th 2016, where the applicant stated that their overall goal was to permanently expand their business and build a new building to accommodate their growth in the near future. The applicant indicated that six months, unfortunately, was not feasible for them considering the steady growth in orders they are currently experiencing, thus prompting the need for a temporary struct structure. After careful review, the City of Hollister Development Services staff determined that pending review and approval by the Planning Commission for the temporary building to be on site, the following would have to occur. Upon approval of the temporary building, schedule meetings with the City staff at six months intervals to review the long-term building plans. At six months and 12-month meeting, review a conceptual plan 
for the site layout, preliminary floor pl plans, and preliminary ingress, egress, and utility plans for the future permanent building. At the 18th month meeting, which was February 23rd, 2018, the applicant shall submit a full site and architecture review application package to the City of Hollister Development Services Department for a new permanent building. Also, if, if the February 23rd, 2018 deadline is met, for example, if, if, if you tonight decide to grant them that um, two-year um, temporary building uh, permit, then at the 18-month mark, as Maria mentioned, February 23rd, 2018, if they, they come in with the Saturn Architectural Review application for their permanent structure, then um, it is expected that by June 25th, 2008, 2018, the temporary building should be vacated and completely removed from the site prior to occupancy of the new building. And, and so, However, if they do get their if they do get their approval tonight and and on February 2018, 18 months from now, they do submit for Saturn Architectural Review. Um, the hope is that the hope is that they substantially progress and they're getting their building permits as well for for their building permit. If the February 23rd, 2018 deadline is not met, the temporary building should be vacated and completely removed from the site by August 25th, two years from now. If the February 23rd, 2018 deadline is met, but a building permit is not actively pursued by June 25th, 2018, the temporary building should be vacated and completely removed from the site by August 25th, 2018. So in this, we're, um, we're, staff is willing to work with the applicant as long as the applicant is willing to do their due diligence and a meeting with us at every six months, um, showing us their plans and showing us um, what their future permanent building is gonna be like, and the hope is that within 18 months from today, they submit a set of architectural review, and pending approval, uh, within two years, they get their building permits and, and construct, so that way they could vacate the um, modular, modular building. So with that, <clears throat> staff recommends that Planning Commission review the applicant's request, receive all written and oral testimony regarding the proposal, and consider approving condition use permit application 2016-7, subject to the findings and conditions contained in the draft resolution. Are there any questions for I staff? Do, I do have a question, just for clarification here. There, are, in, in that M1 industrial zoning district off Fallon Road and Lana Way, there's several pre-engineered pre metal buildings that are allowed. You said modular buildings, I believe, are not allowed. So this is not a pre-engineered rigid frame type building? Correct. This is going to be a temporary modular building that they're proposing at, at this time for um, future permanent industrial building in, in, the, in the future. What, uh, what type of siding material is... At this time, what they're, is they're wood or metal? The applicant is here to oh, okay. to. It's, it's going to be a wood siding. Okay, sir, can you uh, come to the podium, please? State your name. Good evening. Uh, my name is Chris St. John with American Casting Company. Uh -huh. uh, thank you for hearing us this evening. Okay. It, from just from the elevations, it looks kind of like one of those pre-injured metal buildings, but it's not. It's a modular building. Correct. Okay, I just wanted to make that clear. So, I, uh, and you were saying it'll be Chris? wood siding, and okay. it'll be fully skirted yeah. to the ground, and then custom painted to match I our see. current facility. Yeah, that's the modular. Okay. All right. Any uh, questions for the applicant? No, but I do have one for Abraham. Abraham, you laid out the guidelines and presented that up on the screen, but I didn't mention what the response of the applicant was to those conditions. I, I will say I do appreciate staff kind of working and laying out that timeline. Yes. Uh, but what was the applicant's response to what was proposed here, what's outlined up on the board? Um, no, yes, correct. Um, uh, Mr. Torres, Commissioner Torres, we did, we did at first indicate that six months was the limit, but then... Um, when, after we met with them, they indicated that, as as, in the, as proposed to you tonight, that um, six months wasn't enough. They were hoping to go a little bit more, like to, like two years. So then, we with the with the applicant and their engineer and Ha Samanita Engineering, we we formulated this this um, 
outline, and so this is what we what we discussed in our in our meeting, and okay, that's so kind of so what we came up with. So you guys are comfortable with the outlines that are proposed? In yes, the, it was uh, it was a group group problem solving <laughs> event to come up All with right. these times. Good. So. No, I appreciate Very you guys getting show. together and hashing that out. Uh, you know, we don't want to deter businesses from growing and uh, you know try to be responsible and, and understand the needs of the businesses here in town to to grow basically thank you so. yeah one of the things that wasn't mentioned um, we recently just bought that property so we were renting the property for many years we recently invested in nice. buying both the lot that the current building's on and the lot next door so we're eager to grow in this town fantastic Thank you. Thank you. No, my, no, I, need, I, need, I need officially uh, open up uh, the public. Hearing. I have one question. <laughs> Did, are, are you going to build? Uh, okay, you have the modular, and you're going to build on another site on the same property. When yeah. You so the adjacent lot is where we're thinking the main site will be. Okay. So you can just move right into your new building, and that will go away. Correct. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. Okay. We were still on the uh, questions for the staff report. Oh, I'm any sorry. Any other any other comments or questions in no. the staff report? Yeah. Okay, open up the public hearing now at 640. Any, uh, in, anyone in the audience care to uh, speak on this item, sir? Be good? Okay. Uh, this, my name's John Reed. I'm the president of uh, American Casting. I would really like to thank uh, Brian, Abraham, and Maria because this is our first go around in something like this with you know planning because we've never built anything before we've just expanded within our little building but what's happening to us right now is we need more sales staff and engineering staff in order to grow right now we have uh, my business partner who's about to retire he's our uh, VP of sales and he's off-site in Nevada so we're gonna hire new sales staff because in order to build a building we need sales we need engineering so the purpose of this building that, that we're gonna build is to put salesmen and engineers in the little bit of space that the that we're using right now for offices in the existing building we will use to expand our manufacturing but we, are, we have a very small building, but a lot goes on inside that building. You know, we'd, we'd love to have you come and see what goes on in there. You know, we're actually pouring 3,000 degree metal. We've got, you know, 1,800 degree kilns and things. You know, from the outside, it looks like the BLM. People think we're the BLM, but <laughs> it's, it's a lot different inside. But this is what we need um, now in order to you know, Chris figured it out. We can get this building delivered, you know, promptly. I don't like building something that I'm just going to tear down later, you know, that if we were to build a pre-engineered building. So we bring this in. We've already got been uh, interviewing for sales and engineers. We'll move in there. I'll move my office in there also. We'll expand manufacturing and at the same time get to work, you know, Thank you guys for working with us and getting plans, architectural plans, make it look nice, city you know, Hollister operation, try to, you know, because I, I live right downtown. I'm a few blocks from here. I love this town. I think it's a great town to live in. So uh, anyway, thank you very much for, for your help. You're very welcome. Thank you. And did you want to say a few words? <laughs> Bill. <laughs> Bill got an appointment. <laughs> I, I'm here in case you have questions, obviously, but okay. I do want to say we really appreciate staff working with the applicant to determine a timeline that makes sense for what they're trying to do, but also makes sense for the city of Hollister. Yeah. And I'm here if you have any questions about the site plan or anything. Any questions on no. the site plan? Really no. Pretty good. Well, thank you. Anne. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I'll close public hearing now. It what is the score of the game? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Sixteen to seven. Never mind. Okay. I just want to say I, I appreciate you working with the applicant on this for a business good product. It's 
well situated there in the M1 uh, industrial zone and, and although it is a modular building it's temporary and um, thanks for working with the applicant on this okay the staff, all the staff worked together and brought it together so thanks <laughs> flexible any comments on item number three mm. okay what's well, the pleasure of the Planning Commission I'll go ahead and do another um, I'll go ahead and uh, move for approval of conditional use permit application 2016-7 PC resolution 2016-25 Second. I have a motion and a second all in favor say aye aye, aye. aye. item three has been approved congratulations right. thank you thank you okay so that concludes the uh, public hearings and we go into new business department reports <laughs> no, I, uh, I just wanted to um, make sure and, and introduce again um, Brian to everybody um, who's obviously sitting in my, in my seat. I took that seat in May of 2004 now, I understand. So um, it's been 12, over 12 years of serving the Planning Commission at, in this capacity, and I appreciate all your help and all the things that you've done and, and the time that everybody and the commissions uh, before you have taken to help out um, the city of Hollister. So I just wanted to say thanks, and, and you probably won't see me ever again. So. <laughs> I understand you're uh, you're going to be on the on the Going Green show in uh, September 23rd. Yeah, stop roping me into things. <laughs> <laughs> it was Sean Novak, not me. <laughs> no, I, I uh, thank you, Bill, for you know being with us for 12 years. Believe me, and uh, in all seriousness, and and Brian too. I've been getting to know Brian a little bit, and I really appreciate you stepping up on the helm there. And um, with and personally, I, I've I've enjoyed the. The planning commission and, and being part of it for several years so i thanks i look forward to working with all of you and um, in my opinion the development services department is the best department in the city so i'm a lucky guy to to work with all of them so. i will say as an architect like today i was in san jose went to uh, cupertino i go to santa clara and there's some good departments but ours is the best the Number city one. of hollister by far want to say that and there's no hyperbole there at all <laughs> okay so we go into Planning Commission reports okay uh, uh, fellow commissioners uh, and staff um, so I just wanted to report that on uh, August 17th I attended along with Brian attended the uh, San Benito County Planning Commission meeting uh, where there the discussion in regards to the inclusion housing ordinance for the county was ultimately approved uh, to go before the Board of Supervisors. We're probably looking at about a 30-day turnaround. I know that the county planning uh, staff are, are working with stakeholders like Chispa, who I work for, and other affordable housing developers to fine-tune a few of the items um, and correct some uh, misspells within the ordinance itself that will be go before the Super Board of Supervisors. So. Um, we hope to continue to have uh, more discussions with the county in regards to that ordinance, and um, I'm hoping that the city, with Brian's help, and uh, uh, that we can either develop our own ordinance to mirror that of the county's or come up with uh, a um, mechanism that we could, uh, the city of Hollister can use to provide affordable housing. So uh, that's my report. And if I might add to that is, and I you probably have got to, email from um, County Commissioner uh, Chairman Ray Pierce we've been having a little difficulty scheduling our joint Planning Commission meeting so I did email Ray that I would poll the commissioners this evening to see what date possible dates we could uh, you know target for this joint meeting so uh, I know there has to be a, a certain uh, time requirement to have it officially and properly noticed is there any is there any time uh, Abraham that you guys have been thinking about for the joint meeting for the joint meeting we since the cancellation of the last meeting we haven't really um, been in contact with the county to see what what days and times would be um, available but as long as we have enough time for it for us to do the the uh, last time the county is the one that did the public notice and then and then every city 
Hollister, the county in San Juan Bautista, just had the requirement of posting. We posted it. Fortunately, it looked like the county wasn't able to or didn't, and that's why it got got canceled. But at this time, um, my understanding is, is as long as it's published 10 days before the meeting, then then we're able to set okay. the meeting. And as long as we post it three days before the meeting, we're, we're good to go. So, yeah, mm-hmm. at that time, you guys just let us know, and, and we'll, we'll accommodate as best as possible. My understanding is that the last meeting w- was going to be simultaneously t- to the City Planning Commission meeting. Would you guys entertain that again for the month of September, having it the same date? Of, or are, are you looking at a large amount of projects coming in in September? Um, yes. Uh, in September, we, we are. Um, you you meeting. have may received already a draft environmental impact report for the North Street project. We're anticipating that for September. Uh, okay. And that, that in itself... It's uh, multiple resolutions that that we're gonna go through. So that that one appears to be, it. and then we have other projects as well that are anticipated in September. Um, but yeah, so it can be it can be to any. I think I think actually the uh, the San Benito County Planning Commission meeting was gonna be um, yes. that is gonna be was gonna be simultaneously with that Joint Planning Commission meeting. I think they only had like a minor subdivision to to um, to report to on that day, right. and then we we're gonna. We're going to proceed with our joint planning commission meetings. Um, so, yeah, maybe um, maybe Using it can theirs. be that it can be, yeah, because it was going to be out in the county. Yeah. We, we so could, maybe we use theirs for the month yeah. of September. Yeah. Like it, it's, they're light. They're, yeah. They're, they meet on a Wednesday. Is that correct? That's correct. You know what what, uh, what Wednesday is in the month? Twice a, twice a month? Or is it twice a month? I, I think it's the, the second, thir- the second, second or Thursday. third. So that yeah. would be 13th of September? I think. believe. We can probably go on the website and find out right now. Yeah, I have to confirm. I have to confirm what what the county and see what yeah, they would been try. Yeah, I'm try the the first meeting, uh, county meeting in, in September. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so okay. Yeah. We'll uh, I'll email Ray and see if we can get that set up. Yeah, you let us know. Let us know, and we'll we'll accommodate. But okay. Any other planning commission reports? I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So move. I have a motion to second all favor say aye. aye. We are officially adjourned. Thanks for coming. We'll see you Thursday, September 22nd. 651.